Hey guys, Corey with Palmetto Battery Pros, and today we're going to be doing a lithium conversion on this 2006 Club Car DS. We are going to be installing Eco Batteries 51 volt, 105 amp hour LifeBo 4 golf cart battery. And we have unboxing videos available on our YouTube channel that covers everything that comes in the installation bundle, but I'll run through it real quick. Of course, you have your battery, and the battery does come with the M8 volt terminal hardware. It also comes with terminal protectors. Eco provides the 15 amp onboard charger. Also included is the 12 volt reducer, the wiring harness for the 12 volt reducer. Eco provides cart specific charge port replacements. This is the dash mounted voltage meter. Comes with the brackets and hardware to mount it to your dash, as well as the communication cable that is long enough to reach up to your dash. And the last thing included in the installation bundle is the Club Car DS mounting bracket and hardware. And I'll show you how to install that here in a second. And just a little bit about the cart. It has been upgraded. It has an upgraded key switch, has the Navitas uh, AC system in here. The OBC has already been bypassed. And if your OBC has not been bypassed, I highly recommend you doing that. I have some other videos on OBC bypass on some club car precedents. So please search those if you need a reference. This customer has a lot of 12 volt accessories in this cart. So we went ahead and identified all those, got them organized and hopefully with some wire management, we can make that look a lot better. Okay, the first thing you should go ahead and address is the charge receptacle. These are Phillips head screws. Go ahead and remove four and the on the back side of the charge receptacle, the positive went to your main battery bank and the negative also went to your main battery bank. Um, it may go to your OBC if it hasn't been bypassed already. You're gonna unplug this fuse and then you will be able to remove the charge receptacle. And the Eco port is just really secure. It doesn't budge. At this point, I like to go ahead and get the everything in the battery tray situated before I drop the battery in. So we're gonna have to be clever about where we put our charger and our 12 volt reducer. Um, this area right here would be ideal, but there's the solenoid behind it, the controller's back here, so we need to be careful about drilling into this side. So you have the bottom of the tray, which is available. It is open and I do like to keep my charger 12 volt reducer raised or protected somehow from splash up uh, coming from the bottom of the cart. So um, we're gonna have to figure this out. So we went ahead and removed the lead acid batteries and the tray is in pretty good shape. There's a little bit of corrosion damage here from the old lead acid batteries. It's not too bad and this bar is still plenty strong but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use my wire brush attachment on my drill and clean up any corrosion spots in the battery tray and give it a good wipe down and, and just try to make it look as good as I can. Okay, I've gone ahead and cleaned the tray out and I wire brushed all the corrosion. After that, I coated the steel frame in a rust and corrosion preventative. Because this battery is expected to last 10 years, I wanna make sure that the tray remains intact during that time period as well. I mounted my 12 volt reducer and my onboard charger on the passenger side and I cut a piece of wood to size and nut and bolted it down to the frame and then I used the self-tapping screws provided to mount them down to the wood. Before we nut and bolt the mounting bracket down to the frame, we want to make sure that we have it in the correct position. So go ahead and set your bracket kind of in the middle of this space, maybe a little heavy towards the driver's side. Next, take this mounting rod and screw it into the threaded hole. Then we'll slide the through hole over that and make sure that we have it in the right place. You wanna make sure that the battery is sitting right where you want it and that you have room on both corners here, especially in the front. You can go ahead and remove it. Now that the bracket is in the right place, we can go ahead and nut and bolt the four corners. The mounting bracket 
is completely secured to the cart using your Allen key and your 13 mil socket. Then we'll go ahead and drop the battery over top and secure it down to the mounting bracket. Before I mount this battery, I noticed that the vertical bar is a little short when you screw it all the way down. And if you back it out a little bit, it's, uh, it's too loose. So I shortened the threads here at the bottom with a lock washer and a nut. I got a little tip from Eco. If your battery is sliding around, you can put a small piece of foam or a piece of rubber between the battery and the mounting bracket. Battery is very secure. Okay, go ahead and bring all your 48 volt supply over to the terminal side. And I have all my 12 volt stuff over here and we have our work cut out for us. Okay, go ahead and get your 12 volt reducer wiring harness and you're gonna plug this side into the reducer itself. Next, you can go ahead and get your charger input with the secure weatherproof connection and you can plug that into the back of the charge receptacle. So now we'll go ahead and run this down through the battery tray and up underneath the cart to the dash. In regards to the rest of the 12 volt reducer wiring harness, the small black and yellow, which have the eyelets on them, they're gonna go to our 48 volt supply. So they're gonna go to our battery bank and the black and red without the eyelets is your 12 volt supply. Go ahead and plug up your voltage meter wiring harness. It only goes in one place. There's this port right here, communication port on the battery. Screw it down. And next you will run it the same way as you ran the long orange to the dash. Go ahead and pull both harnesses through your battery box. Zip tie them with existing wiring harnesses and run them up to the front of the car. And then find where they go up into the dash and push them through. Go ahead and pull your slack through. Okay, this customer has an aftermarket dash and he does not want to drill into it. Um, and there's really not even a good place to put the voltage meter. So luckily Eco makes this bracket here and it's a perfect fit for the voltage meter. So I'm gonna use the two provided screws to mount this bracket to the bottom of his dash. I'm gonna make a hole behind it, big enough to fit the wiring harness through. And then we'll go ahead and secure the voltage meter by inserting it into the bracket, installing the back bracket, and using the provided nuts to tighten the bracket down. Once you go ahead and secure the seven millimeter nuts on the back side of the voltage meter, you can go ahead and plug your harness in to the back of the voltage meter and it's a six pin and a four pin. You're not gonna get them wrong. They only go one way. Go ahead and pull your slack through, zip tie it together and hide it in the dash. So the last thing we're gonna hook up in the dash is the long orange that goes to our 12 volt reducer. And I went ahead and cut the eyelet off and put a posi tap on. And we're gonna use this to connect it to the cold side of the key switch, which in the club cars is the blue wire. All right, here's the back of my key switch. Here's my blue going to the cart. And you see I've tapped the orange into it. So now when the key switch is in the on position, the 12 volt reducer will supply 12 volts to all the accessories. After an extreme amount of wire management, I am now ready to go ahead and hook everything up to the battery and hopefully it'll look good when we're finished. So the first thing I wanna go ahead and knock out is my 12 volt supply. So this customer already had a 12 volt reducer hooked up to his stereo, hooked up to his underglow lights. Um, I cleaned all the wires up, but I, I left everything hooked up as is. I am installing the provided Eco 12 volt reducer, and I'm going to run the lights to, directly to the reducer. If I was hooking up more than one 12 volt accessory, I would recommend installing a fuse block and running the 12 volt output from the Eco 12 volt reducer to the fuse block. 
But in this case, since it's only one and it's just lights, directly to the 12 volt reducer output. So let's go ahead and hook everything up to the battery now. So we go in order from smallest to biggest, biggest touching the post. So the smallest item is going to be our 12 volt reducer, 48 volt input. Next, we have the positive from the existing 48 volt reducer, positive from our onboard charger. And the last item going to the post is our main positive cable from our solenoid. Go ahead and use your 13 millimeter wrench to tighten down the terminal hardware. Next, replace your terminal protector. If there's any corrosion on your terminals, go ahead and wire brush them now. And on the negative side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go smallest to biggest. Uh, this is a ground wire from the aftermarket key switch. Next, you have the 48 volt supply for the eco reducer. We have the 48 supply for the existing reducer. Our charger ground. And lastly is the main negative cable. Now we're ready to go ahead and do some final wire management, and then we'll be ready to test the cart. So we finished up the last bit of wire management and we're ready to test the cart. So we'll go ahead and cut the battery on by pushing the on off button. We have power and the underglow lights came on. So we have power going to our 12 volt reducer that was already on the cart. Our voltage meter did light up. Now we're gonna go ahead and enter the customer's code and turn the key switch on. Now we will put the cart into forward, lightly hit the gas. And we have cart operation. All right, we're at 26% charge out of the box. So we're gonna go ahead and max charge this battery. And get your heavy duty extension cord, something that can handle 15 amps. Plug it into the charge receptacle. The charger will turn on, the fan will start running. And the battery will max charge. And you can see on our voltage meter, the voltage is rising. So now we're gonna go ahead and let this battery max charge and then we're gonna take it for a test drive. Okay guys, that's it for Eco Batteries 51 volt, 105 amp hour, through hole battery installation in a 2006 Club Car DS. We hope this video helped you out. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and we will answer them as soon as we can. Also, if we missed anything or if there's a better way to do something, please leave those comments below as well. We are always love feedback and we're not know-it-alls. We are an authorized dealer for Eco Battery. So if you would like to purchase one of these batteries, you can order by phone weekdays nine to five, or you can also shop online at palmettobatterypros.com. We assist our customers through the purchasing process, the installation process, and throughout ownership. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We have more lithium unboxing and installation videos coming out. We're also working on some pretty cool comparison videos between the top brands. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks, y'all.